in uh, I think, I? Maybe in 1973, a guy named Louis Rigos beat the shorts off in, in, in the schoolyard. That's what that felt like. Uh, but you know what? You learn from it. And uh, we're young, and we didn't execute a game plan. Part of our game plan was to make them beat us over the top, and they shot the heck out of them. If they shoot the basketball like that, they're going to be a tough team to beat for a lot of people. But uh, you know, we didn't execute and kick the ball out after we penetrated. I think it became a little bit of a a macho thing that our guys are competitors and they wanted to try to get the ball to the rim and uh, that's not that's not our world you know our world is out around the arc and getting in there and, and then kicking and getting good looks I thought we got a lot of real good looks in the first half and I felt confident in the halftime that we were going to be able to get back in the game we continued to get those looks uh, because we, we would knock them down but obviously that wasn't the case uh, I feel for John Severe obviously comes in here New York kid a lot of hype and his first time in the garden and he had you know he lays an egg but he's going to be a good player. So I trust him, and I know there'll be better days ahead for him, and he'll continue to work hard on that. Questions? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 like, you told me on the way, Chris. This is just one you put behind you. She told me, like my life coach. I'm like, yeah, no kidding. No kidding. You, you do put this one behind you. We have a game Tuesday, so uh, I don't know how football coaches do it, waiting a week after, after tough losses. So we can turn this around quick. Just your thoughts on John's game today, obviously not the game he wanted, he wanted for 21, I mean, what, was that them? Or, yeah, that? both. I think it was them. I'm sure they were highly motivated. They'd heard enough about New York State Player of the Year and all that nonsense. And, uh, you know, they came out and they made an extra defensive effort on him and then he forced it a little bit, I thought, you know. I thought there were opportunities from the knockdown open jumpers when he decided to drive the ball and vice versa, but, you know, it's all part of the learning curve for freshmen, no matter how good they are. There's a growth cycle here. And, and he's got to experience big arena, big team, and you know they're similar to some of the teams, some of the teams in the A10. So uh, a day like this will help him and uh, prepare for some of the better teams he plays as we move forward. Tom, at some point, at some point late in the first half, you were shooting 88 percent. I know. What do you what do you do when you look at the score when you see? Well, at halftime, I looked at that and I just said, you know, they can't keep shooting this way. I wasn't concerned about them making the perimeter shots because I thought if they made, I knew coming in if they shoot the ball well from three, we're not going to win this basketball game. Uh, you know, and then they go shoot 9 for 15 for the game. But what concerned me were the dunks, the great, the layups. You know, we needed to stay disciplined, and I think as we mature as a team, we'll be able to do that and, and execute a game plan through a half and, and not panic. And I think the, yeah, I could see it in their eyes, you know. Uh, and our lack of depth caught up to us, too. You know, we were tired and, and they were still sprinting the floor. The missed dunks, was that the thing where the patient frustration was I, easy dunk turn into like an iron rebound. Yeah, I think he's lucky. He was frustrated. You know, he's a very competitive kid. He's a very good basketball player. He wasn't today. So he's just trying to make a point on it, but that kind of sums up his day. You know, you miss a dunk, it goes up the hill of the rim, it goes out, and it becomes an outlet pass going the other way. So, uh, you know, it happens. Tom, how difficult of a matchup was Sanchez? I mean, inside out, he's doing a lot of different things, and also just the preparation, because I don't think they've even seen what he could fully do yet. This was really Yeah, no, that was the best I've seen him play. You know, I know he's a good player. I saw him in junior college when he played. But, yeah, no, I mean, when he make, when he's making perimeter shots like that, it's a totally different dimension because of his length and his size, and they play him as a three and as a four. So having that on the floor, is, it, they create a great space today. And once they create space offensively by shooting the ball that well, then their athleticism around the basket, their ability to put it on the deck really, really blossoms, you know, it really shows. Tom, in order to, to prep for this game, you've probably looked at film on St. John's a few, from a few games this season. Yes. What do, you, what do you see in their evolution? Well, I think if they continue to shoot the ball like this, I see great things. You know, uh, you can only coach one team, but when you watch a team, you get familiar with personnel, and obviously us playing them each year, I know some of the guys. But if they continue to shoot the basketball like this, that gives them that great balance. So, so, so the only real difference you saw in St. John's through these through these games is that they shot well tonight? Well, yeah, they shot well. I thought they played with great energy. But I think they always play. They always defend. I think they're a very good defensive team. I think they're under 40% as a team, 39 and change, you know, as a team. Uh, defensive field goal percentage, and that's the mark of a good team. They rebound the basketball. Um, you know, so I, I think that they're going to be fine. I don't think there's any glaring issues. Uh, what I've always said is, you know, you got to make, uh, as we game prep for this and we put a game plan together, uh, myself and my staff, we talk about they got to beat us over the top. 
It's got to be a one-shot game. We can't allow them to get a lot of offensive rebounds. They didn't need the offensive rebound line. Nothing was going off. You know, it was all going in. And in turn, when they were making shots, it allows them to get organized defensively and be that much better at defensive team. You know, uh, and, and there's a big difference in teams defensively off misses and off makes. Tom, really not much to take away positively, but trade with Jade 9 and 19 minutes and really spells Ryan when he got into foul trouble early on. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, there's numbers and then there's numbers. And I am happy with Trey's effort. You know, Trey lost 80 pounds. He's still working on his conditioning. At the end of a game, I look at him in, in rooms and him and Ryan together as a two-headed monster, and I combine those numbers and say, you know, that's what we got out of the five spot tonight. But there's, there's numbers and then there's soft numbers, which is when games are out of, you know, out of reach and, and it's able to play. But I was happy with some of the things Trevion did. I thought he could do well.